Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another exciting Vobi One-Eyed Kenobi Showbi with me, Richard Vobes, on the 2nd of June, 2021. Yes, I'm here flying solo today, and it's been another hot day. Hot! 23 degrees, I think somebody said. 23 glorious degrees here in jolly old Worthing. It might be a different uh, amount of degrees. It might be the three degrees where you are if you're in a cold area and your teeth are chattering or indeed singing. Uh, no singing in today's show unless it happens to me. Me singing for you. Although, ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned in today's show because Raymond, Ray of Hope, has a rather jazzy little number for us all lined up. More about that later in the show. It's very nice of you to come along midweek uh, to see me. Don't forget, if you enjoy these shows, you can support the show uh, by becoming a patron of the show and indeed the Bald Explorer, the whole caboose, by going to baldexplorer.com and uh, throwing in a few pennies worth of whatever uh, in the donation pot that we have there. Baldexplorer.com is the place to go. We have, for your delectation, thank you to the wonderful people who have created this in tonight's show, uh, videos, seven, six, six videos, and the flower and tree quiz from Mark Burgess. But first, uh, we have um, we have rhubarb cakes from Sean James Cameron. We have more of Corfe Castle, where we actually see the castle from Stephen Agger. We have hairs and things from Richard and Annis. Uh, Bernie takes us out into North Wales for the very last time. And a moment of Murphy is in today's show by Andrew Murphy. And of course, as I mentioned just now, a ray of the hope gives us some hope. Uh, 1920s style. But what is the famous piece of music that he has put against that theme? Oh, you'll have to wait and see. We will be playing that a little later in the show. Meanwhile, out there in the land of Nod, those people who've come in with sand, sand turns, even sunburns, and red rosy bottoms from exposing themselves far too much in the sunshine are all the lovely viewers in the Vobosphere. And thank you so much for coming along and joining us. So prepare yourself for the Vobes style uh, roll call, not as lovely and as classy or even on the sofa as the lovely Julia. Um, but lovely Julia is out there making sure that we are all doing well. She ha does happen to be bathing uh, little Joe, she said earlier. She said, I'll be bathing Joe, she said at the same time. But don't panic. I should be watching in case there's any miscreants out there causing chaos and mayhem. You don't hear the word miscreants uh, very often, do you? But on this show, you never know what you're going to hear. Uh, let's uh, find out who is actually out there by scrolling up to the very top and uh, giving you all a good fond hello. So, starting at the top there, lovely Julia, of course. Lovely to see you, lovely Julia. Colonel Craig Ratty is there. He's, he's He says, am I the first in? Yes, indeed. You're the first in, which means that you have to sweep up at the end. Uh, it's a new rule that we've just introduced. If you come in first, I'm afraid you're responsible for making sure all the fag ends are up and all the popcorn is uh, completely tidied away. And we want you to mop the floor so it's lovely for Friday's show. By the way, Dump Man should be here in a week's time. Yes, the legendary man that is uh, Dump Man, who accompanied me on several of the videos that we made a few years ago. Not so many last year and um, none this year. But uh, he will be here to promote his new set of videos in which he's been going off looking at train tracks as he does on his chopper. Yes, you should see him on his chopper. He is a proud boy, I can tell you. Uh, especially when he's got his wonderful uh, T-shirt, which has that famous band whose name always escapes me. I don't know. It's a, it's a, I think it's a boy band of some description. Um, it isn't being... No, not being there. Just there. Th then there. What was that one? The, uh, the one with um, the sing... Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, I can't remember. What was it? Leave them there? Um, how do you do there? One with... Um, uh, the, the the northern singer who was on the talent show and the other one who went off to America, Robbie, not Robbie Coltrane. Oh, I'm never I'm no good at singers and their names. And uh, he something about angels. Did he sing that one about angels? Rob, Robbie Robbie Simons, Robbie Steve, Robbie 
Robin Bank? I can't remember. You're, anyway, not that band. Uh, Motor, was it Motorhead? That, I think that's the band that dumped man. I'm just getting myself, digging myself deeper into the ditch, which I don't mind doing because it hides me from everybody else. Uh, anyway, uh, Colonel Craig Ratty, lovely to see you. Thank you very much for coming in. St uh, Station Master's Choices, greetings, Richard. I hope you're okay this evening. Hello, Julia. Like the video with Joe, lovely Woodland. Ah, thank you so much. Yeah, we had a lovely time, actually, um, down there in the woods. And it was nice to see little Joe confidently clambering up onto the very tops of the trees, swinging around, going, Aah! like that, thinking he was Tarzan. And so I went swinging after him and went, <clears throat> me, Jane. And uh, Julia, no, she wasn't cheetah. Um, anyway, uh, enough of that gay banter. Um, uh, Daniel Watkins is also out there. Lovely to see you, Daniel. Thank you for popping in. Uh, no more birthdays for you for 363 days. Uh, so he said that. He says, I want to, I don't want to sound paranoid, but does Bonnie actually hate me? For some reason. Why on earth would Bonnie, lies over the ocean, hate you? Why should she hate you? Um, have you done something to upset her? We don't want anybody to upset anybody in the audience here. Don't worry, all the haters, they upset me. But we don't want anybody, don't let any of the others hate each other inside. That's not how it works. No, the, the, you, the haters hate me and you all love each other. That's not a cue for an orgy. It's far too hot. Um, so we've got Anne Jones. Anna Jones says, hello, Richard, uh, Julia, Bernie, uh, Daniel, Peter. Good job you came in when you did. Otherwise, you'd have a list of 85 people to say hello to, like I have often. Um, Mark's Adventures. Hello to him. He is Mark Donny McLeod. He says, oh, he's back then after gallivanting all over the South Downs. I'm going for the jacket and mustard pullover thing today. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I was thinking of a duffel coat, actually. That was going to be my modus operandus dress today, but unfortunately, I haven't got one. Plus the fact I haven't got any toggles. The last time I had a toggle was when I was in the Cubs, and that was uh, supposed to be a woggle, but uh, I got all that wrong. Anyway, never mind all that nonsense. Um, Colonel Craig Radio, I've said, uh, Glyn uh, Horton. Hello, Glyn. Nice to see you. Very good. Um, good to see some old names. There's Bonnie, who's saying hi. Uh, for some reason, she says, I really hate and detest that Daniel... What? No, she doesn't. She I just made that up to stir the pot. You know what I'm like. I do like a good stir. Um, anyway, enough of that uh, business. Let's have a look. We're scrolly, scrolling. A lot of conversation there. Says, I've been lying on a swinging man chair. Ooh, uh, I've seen those in certain videos late at night. I'm not sure that you want to be promoting that. Uh, reading in the sunshine. What were you reading, Bonnie? That's what we want to know. What is on your reading list? Uh, walking with John and Diane. Who, uh, Diana, get it correct there, says, Whoa! Whoa! Bonnie? Whoa! Is that some sort of, that's what I thought, some sort of euphemism? But isn't a euphemism an instrument, a musical instrument? Does that go with the, oh no, that's a harmonium, isn't it? Are you no, yeah, I'm thinking of a different thing. Sorry about that. I, see, I am easily confused, as you may well know. Uh, so that's all good. We also have there Kerry Baldwin. Hello to you. Nice to see you. Um, also on our list of entrants for the first to arrive and grabbing all the good seats is Andrew Norris. Lovely to have you. Ralph Tomlinson. Hello to you. Nice to see you. Patrick Brooks. Uh, Tracy Murphy is in the house. Um, who else over there? Clive Waterfall. Uh, I'm looking right over there. I don't know why the uh, comments are so far away. Maybe if I put them here, it would be a bit easier to read, wouldn't it? Um, and also, I'm slightly dazzled by the lights. Dazzled by the lights! <clears throat> I don't know where that came from. Uh, Bonnie says, I'm in a rant mode, so hold on to your hats. Are you going to ring in, um, Bonnie? We want a good rant. I want a fancy a rant tonight. Ron Langley, good evening to you. And Ron, we can see your lovely text glowing in the wind. Uh, G Ramps is out there. Nice to see you, Chris, out there, down, down there in Somerset. And don't you dare take the mickey of my accent, because uh, my accent's normal. It's just you that has a different accent, you bald bloke with glasses. 
And when are you going to use one of my lenses next? I've been using your lenses actually today, funnily enough. Uh, Michael White, Rachel T.S. Uh, we also have Ernie Samet. Ernie Samet, I'm coming down to see you and stay and look at your lovely accommodation. And I know you've got a cobra ready to put into my bed. What? No, I don't know. Now, by the way, am I staying in the house or am I staying in the van? What is the plan, Stan? That's what I want to know. Uh, evening, he says, um, and I've just it's just moved now. Somebody must have uh, added a thing. Jeff and Mandy, hello to you, Jeff and Mandy. Audrey, For Audrey Forbes, we haven't seen you for a while. Have you been uh, vacating or have I just missed your wonderful presence? It's very easy. Mike Stevens says hi. Um, I always say hello on the Vogue show, but no one says hi back. I usually go. What do you mean go? Garden is growing well. Um, not everybody. Let me just say this uh, once or maybe I can say it several times or maybe I can forget to say it. But I know that the comments do not always work. I don't know quite what's going on. I mean, you have to imagine poor old YouTube, the, the bloke, you know, the bloke who runs YouTube is sitting there with umpteen hundred million different um, YouTube accounts all going live at the same time. They all ch choose to be in competition with the Vogue's. Don't they know there's a moron? I mean, there's. Uh, don't they know that I'm here trying to do a show? They should get a, get out the way. So not always the comments come. So I know a number of people have said, well, I say hello and nobody talks to me. So don't go. Don't go. Stay. Stay a while. And while you stay, there's a party in the house. It's not a very good party, but it's the only one we've got. Linda Kane is here. Uh, nice to see you, Linda Kane. Uh, very good. That's um, twice in one week that I've managed to avoid Linda Kane. Apparently, she knocked on the door. <coughs> Oops, open up. And she gave us very kindly the Sussex flag, which is somewhere behind me. And uh, then the other day, she said, uh, she said, oh, you were filming yesterday in the very woods that we chose to go to, but decided, because there was horrible smell there probably the Vobes backfiring, we decided not to go after all. So that was another narrow miss with the lovely Linda Kane. Um, who else have we got? Alan Sandell, who says, gotcha. Uh-oh, I've been caught. Nice to see you. Don't know why the show wasn't streaming for me. Ah, Alan Sandell, we have taken a special um, thing out uh, with YouTube. Certain people who, you know, we feel are a little bit cagey, a bit dodgy and probably dealing cards to each other and playing a nice game of bridge uh, probably shouldn't have the show streamed to them that's that is the raison d'etre uh, th that's french by the way oh, oh, don't stop me off on the french from last week in which i had been learning some more of your lovely english phrases like uh, how you say i would like a full english breakfast if that is all right with you That is the noise of the television in the old days requiring to be turned off. But nobody remembers the old days, only some of us old fogies. Michael White, I think I've said hello to you, uh, which is nice. Um, who else? Ali, Sa uh, Ali? Ali Sandell. Uh, Ernie. Ernie. He says, up to you, a bedroom I named the Blue Room can be kitted out for well that would be lovely i don't want to sleep in the van if i've got the chance of sleeping in the blue room with all those blue move uh, uh, those uh, blue um furniture that you've got lined up there for me that would be uh that'd be lovely is that would would i do i have to dress up as the blue boy you know that big Gaines is it Gainsborough who did the picture of the blue boy where's that microphone over there uh is it Gainsborough um or was it los losborough um, Rita Loy is also out there says uh, talk about a Freudian slip calling yourself an idiot yes I am a complete nut idiot oh I accept it I, if I say it then it's alright for you to say it you see it, it takes the, off the edge if I call myself a complete nut a twit then it doesn't matter if you say it because I've got in there first it's, it's um is it uh, this vehicle is reverse psychology -ing. I think, something like that. Rachel T.S. says, love the French accent, Richard. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. It is a genuine one. I got it out of a bottle at a Kentish Town Market in 1962, a year before I was born. Don't work that age business out because I'm actually younger than I really look. 
in the head. Um, Ed Kerry Baldwin says, been on the coaches a few times. Oh, nice. It's very nice. I've been on a few couches myself in a few times, but I can't possibly tell you where that would be revealing too much of a secret. Have we got... Did I... I probably missed tons of people out, and I apologise if I did miss you out. Uh, but no matter. Let me just move my comments bit, match, bit, bit, shib, bit, nip, 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 and cosy. Thank you very much. A bit more out the way. Um, is it too hot for you? Are you ready to complain? Oh, it's too hot. It's too, just too hot. Oh, blimey. I don't... I can't cope with the heat. Eat. Is it too hot? Is it really? Is it really? I mean, we are terrible, aren't we? We British, we English, we members of the UK, we, what's another one? British, English, members of the UK, uh, the Commonwealth, whatever it is. We all moan about the weather. The weather is the one thing that holds us all together. It's so unpredictable. Do you know, I was sitting on the beach earlier today, just briefly. Uh, well, actually, it was just before I sat on the beach, I have to admit, um, and it rained. Not very much. About four drops came from the sky, but all of them landed on my little head. Splish, splash, splish, splash, like that. A lot of damage was done, actually, to the old head. Colonel Craig Ratty said it started raining just as I was about to wash. You should have just stripped off, climbed up the side of the house, which I'm sure you do all the time. You probably don't have any furniture on the inside of your house, do you? You probably just sit and have the sideboard right above the eaves. You probably sit there with a the television underneath the windowsill on the top floor. Um, I'm sure that uh, the kitchen sink must be... Oh, quick, think of another feature of a house in which uh, the, 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 the keystone next to the cops... Um, now, ladies and gentlemen, I had this arrive uh, yesterday, came home, and I have no idea. David from Waterlooville. Do you watch this show? He probably only watches The Bald Explorer. I don't know. David from Waterlooville. That's a cryptic clue. I know that you must be in Hampshire, for that is where Waterlooville is. And I know it's nothing to do with, um, not Nelson. Who's the other one? The one, not tonight, Josephine. Not tonight, that one. What was his name? Emperor, Emperor Bonaparte. Yes, whatever. Do you mind? Anyway, this chap, uh, David from, I don't know who you are, other than David from, and there's a little kiss. That's a bit of a worry, really. There's a lovely little kiss at the bottom. Oh, hello. <laughs> nice. Nice to see you. Um, anyway, he has left, wedged up in front of my house, this rather unusual object. I think it is uh, something totally uh, sexual and should be only used between the sheets. I think it is a very small bedpan for warming up the bed. Either that or you put a, a part of your anatomy in there and... It's a branding. Oh, it's a, it's a brown. Stop it! Ow, that bloody hurt. It's diabolical. That's what it. Oh, diabolo. It says on there. It says on the tin, uh, made of cardboard. The cardboard tin. It says on here, a toasted snack maker. Mm. Has anyone seen one of these? Does anybody know what they are? It creates terribly tempting, devilishly deep-filled toasted snacks, uh, which sounds really. Yes, yeah, a waffle maker. I think is what it is. But I don't know what the what this ingredient is. Uh, it says here, uh, open the dyer below and build your snack. Close the dyer below and trim away the edges. Place the dyer below on the stove. And David from Waterville, Waterlooville, says, uh, here, Richard, he says, delivered by hand, try on your Essie. That's what it says in English words. Uh, no plugs, no mess, no problem. Um, but I don't know what the... Is that bread? Is that bread that you use? Or is it a special little piece of pastry? No. Oh, here's some information. Just a moment. There's some information here. Not your average square meal, it says by Diablo. I don't know if anyone's ever tried it. Anyway, um, yes. Oh, hello. We have a call. I believe it's Bonnie. It's the lovely Bonnie. Let's find out what she wants. Hang on, Bonnie. i just got to get uh, my head together. Hang on. Just put my headphones on. Hello, Bonnie. Now then, I'm not going to talk to you unless your head is together. My head is together. It's firmly clamped <laughs> behind the, with the headphones. And have you clamped it with your Diablo? Um, I, well, I can't quite. Even my poor little pin head won't fit into the Diablo. So your head wouldn't make a tasty snack then? No, definitely not. Don't start thinking about chewing on the fat of my head because there's probably a lot of fat. People say I've got a fat head. Now, I saw your Diablo and I thought that's the perfect in implement for when you come to have breakfast at the beach hut. How would you heat it up? You need something in hot. Now, I know I have a, hot, a lot ah. of hot air. Well, I've got something very similar. Ah, and yeah, I make yeah. tasty snacks on my um, little camping stove in the hut. 
Oh, have, yes, I'm looking forward to that. When are we actually going to do this? You're going to put me up in the um, beach hut overnight, lock me in, in a, <laughs> in a cupboard, and I shall be banging on the door as strangers in the night go past. Strangers well, in the night. You'll have to bring your van. You'll oh, have yes. to bring your van and sleep over. So it's an experiment for you to sleep over in your van, and then I'll see you at the beach hut in the morning. Yes. Nobody's allowed to sleep in the beach huts, you see. They're only really cupboards. Yes. Anyway, I I phoned up for a rant. Oh, good. Oh, good. Now, which volume of rant would you like? Because I can go full Beaufort scale. Mm-hmm. Well, um, no swearing, do, no swearing. This is a family do, no, show. No, I don't do swearing. No. I don't do swearing. Um, but I can do a full force 10, yeah, force 10 rant, if you like. Right. <laughs> oh, oh, what's the other option? Um, I can go away. <laughs> oh. Well, we don't want that. We don't want that. We certainly don't want that. So force 10. So what are you ranting about? What's What has prickled oh. your skin to make you ring in and have a sound off on the Vogue show. Last night and the night before, all the G- <laughs> two Tomcats came knocking at my door. Do you remember that old town? Anyway, um, all the GCSE students in this area in Brighton and Hove decided to go down to Hove Lawns with bottles of booze in carrier bags and basically have a big rave break glass so there's broken glass all over the lawn so you can't take your dog there i love the sound of broken glass i know I'm sorry I, know. I just got that in anyway there's broken glass yes they couldn't be bothered to go to the toilet in the proper toilets and they all peed behind the beach huts they also climbed on the beach huts and somebody had brought an axe and they smashed the roof off one of the beach huts they've oh. also ripped all the poles off the sides of the beach huts where you put your you know windbreak and they've graffitied. So we've got lots of rude things on the back of... I won't tell you what the rude things are. Um, is there a tamer a, version of something rude that they put that is broadcastable? Well, apparently, apparently, and this was on the back of my hut, Terry gets pussy. So I'm assuming he's got a cat or something like that. I think so. Terry, Terry from Terry's All Gold, he does own a cat's home. Something like that. So... Yeah. That was all over the back of my hut, so I had to scrub that off. But there were some quite interesting anatomical drawings on the other huts, but um, I'm not that expert, so I, I couldn't really recognise what they were. But right, there was yeah. quite a lot of laughter from people. But anyway, you can imagine. I can, and, imagine, uh, I can imagine there so, was a lot of rockets and uh, yes. boulders. Yes, that sort of thing with, um, yes, mm. with curly bits. But anyway, mm, I'm not curly sure. Curly bits. So... <laughs> So everybody's hearts got attacked and it was awful. And the police were down there. And, but there were too many of these teenagers for the police to do anything. So I'm just furious. Why, why do they have to destroy everything? The thing is, people will say, oh, well, you were young once. And do you know what? I was. It's a long time ago, but I was young once. And yes, I did sit on a beach hut. Yes, I did do O-levels. Yes, I did go with my pomane down to the beach. Wait, did you do oh. O-levels on the beach hut, though? Something like that. Right. And we larked about and we had lots of fun and we jumped in the sea and did skinny dipping and drank too much wine and things like that. But we didn't smash things up. No. And we didn't leave glass all over the beach. And we didn't just make everything horrible. And we certainly didn't go for weed behind a hut. Anyway... That's my rant. So, okay. Well, I think what should happen is they should, you know, get the names and addresses of these kids. That would be the least that they could do. And then allow the owners of the beach huts to go round to their house and start smashing up their computers and laptops and phones and everything to know so that they know what it's like to have... Because it's all very well, I think... You know, you go, oh, you've been ever so bad. We're going to make you sweep the streets or whatever, or, you know, detention, sleep in a cell overnight. No, you know, the raw emotion that you showed just now needs to be reciprocated so they can go, oh, my God, look, I feel absolutely awful that you've just smashed up daddy's car. No, their own property, things that they own, that they cherish, which might only be their phone. Um, so that they trainers go, or they're trainers. I would train- like to go. Yeah. No, this is retribution. It's very bad. And this isn't me speaking. This is the other version of me. I would like to go and get their trainers mm. and then draw rude things on. And then make them wear them. Mind you, they yes. might have that as a badge of honour. That's the trouble. No, I know. I would like to go to Clark's 
and buy old lady slippers and force them to wear and, those and old old man jesus sandals and make them walk about in really nice shoes yes and that would be their punishment well they could walk about in <laughs> spare throw-offs from me that would be a punishment <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I know you say retri- I know you say you know retribution and vengeance and all that, but unless unless people can actually feel what it's like, how do they know what their actions are doing? Well, I do have an idea which I've offered up to the committee in the Seafront Office, and that is that um, we're going to interview the people that were affected, get it on film, mm. people whose whose huts were ruined and really ups, you know, people really upset about it. Yeah, no, of course. And, they love their huts. I love my hut. My yeah. hut was, um, you know, I've got my hut in honour of my mum. It's mm. called Rosie's Rest because she died 20 years ago and she loved the beach huts. So, you know, if somebody attacks my hut, I feel like they're attacking my mum. I know that's all ridiculous. No, but no, anyway. no, but it's, and, it, you have um, emotion, connection with an object and you're paying for it and you're a member of the society. Why should anybody come along and ruin that for you in a civilised, sophisticated society that we've spent many, many years trying to create. Why should that be allowed? And I'm, and I'm great to teenagers. So, you know, I used to teach them. But anyway, and I know what it's like to be a teenager. And I was wild when I was young, so mm. I understand it. But I don't think I ever destroyed anything. I don't remember destroying anything. So what was the, what was the, what was the thing that the committee of, you're going to submit to the committee then? Anyway, I've, what I've come up with is an idea that I'll go and interview just on my mobile phone. It won't be edited and wonderful like your stuff. But anyway, I'll go and e- I'll go and interview all the people that have been affected, and then I'll put together a presentation. I'm going to take it into all the schools in the area, so that next time, by next year, just before GCSEs, that I'll go in and I'll give a talk to all the GCSE students, and I'll show them films of people who were upset and let them feel what it's like to be upset and then you see the shame and making it personal perhaps they're less likely to do it because prevention is always better than cure well i I agree i think um yeah and well good luck with that i think what should be um permitted is that the police should have the right to clip the buggers around the ears like they used to there's no fear of the police the police should have been able to walk out there and the students to quake in their souls in their there's too many of them There was too many. There were two police cars in the van. There were hundreds of students. Yes. And what happened was they herded them and they all ended up in parks. Yes. So they were ranting all night in parks all over home. Yes, but in the old days, correct me if I'm wrong, and I probably am, um, because I, you know, look at the world through rose-tinted glasses. It's what the bloody optician sold me. Um, but is it is it not the case that in the old days the police would come along and people would go, Oi, copper! <laughs> and run off and he only had a truncheon he didn't have a a radio and mustard gas and all the other accoutrements that they ought to have machine guns and all of that i mean you know let the police come in get boris's um green goddesses with the water cannon on them i know it's a bit extreme actually actually the water cannon's not a bad idea um Because they don't, they don't like looking wet, do they, teenagers? No, they don't. They don't like to appear wet. No, you sort of take them down with uh, that. Or have tins of um, ants and spiders, because many of them are frightened of those sort of things, aren't they? And you just tip them over them. Well, I've got two other ideas. One is to put, I don't know if this is possible or not, but to put that powder on the roof of your hut so that when they touch it, their hands go purple or something. Mm. And the other idea, so that you could identify them the next day, like those exploding bombs that put purple powder all over um, robbers and things. Yes. Anyway, but I don't know if that's just in cartoons. Anyway, and then the other thing was, you know those seagull spikes that go on your roof? Yeah, I, stick I, one of them up I, there. Well, I thought we could put seagull spikes all over the beach huts, but yeah, apparently but that would Yeah, but it's, it's like, you know, I, I think sometimes these things are that you've got to get hold of the kids before they do all of this, like you say, the prevention thing. Instead of, instead of making Fort Knox, they should know right from the word go, this isn't my property, I don't do this. So it's a change in society that's required, not, not just putting up, a whole load of barriers and letting them get away with it. That's why I think the police should have taken a much bigger stand and kids should learn that the police can, you know, 
But where did the parents think all these kids were? They well, all turned up with bottles of booze and they were like 15 and 16 anyway. So what has gone wrong with society that we're in a place that this is allowed? This would not have been allowed before. The problem is, Richard, that this society now is the society we created. Well, so, yes, that's why I'm saying. But why, how, why is it like that? How did we get there? I suppose because my parents were children of World War Two and they were very repressed and we were wild as teenagers and we were wild parents perhaps i don't know but if you went back 100 know, my... 100 150 years back into the victorian times you wouldn't have had this problem and the punishments no, because, you know because the because... punishments would have been raw wouldn't they i mean ki kids would have been beaten for one thing they wouldn't well, wanted children that children were tired because they were up chimneys all day mm, people that's were right. tired shove the them up the chimneys the again energy. then yes oh. I mean, they survived, anyway, some, most of them. <laughs> That's my rant. Thank you very much but for I, the rant. So, anyway, I'll say goodbye now because I'm going to go away and develop my idea for making teenagers wear slippers and yes. old lady shoes because I think that's quite a good idea. I'm going to think about that some more. I think, <laughs> I think if you can name them and shame them and get them on uh, social media uh, so that, yes. uh, you know, do, do all that, you've got to play whatever tricks they do uh, on their comrades... Uh, you should be able to do that back to them. But, of course, we can't, you know, they're, they're the untouchables. That's the problem. And because they're untouchables and you can't, they're all underage, and so you have to respect them because, let's face it, like the Doom Goblin, I'm not supposed to say that, but, you know, they are the fount of all knowledge, apparently. Uh, because oh, that's the other thing. Uh -oh. Sorry, second rant. Second rant, wait for it. This is the appendix to the rant. Oh, right, OK. So, they all had a day off school this year in order to go and do... Um, you know, Pavilion Rebellion, as I call it, and, you know, Extinction Pavilion. Mm. And they were all, like, sitting down in the parks going, oh, you mustn't use plastic, you mustn't leave waste everywhere. And then they do their GCSEs and go down the lawns and chuck waste all over the place. I mean, honestly, it looked like a dustbin down there yesterday. It's terrible. And they were complaining that nobody cleared up the rubbish from the night before. Who were complaining? They were complaining. The teenagers, yes. Yeah. Because there was glass and plastic ev everywhere and they were going, oh, isn't it a mess? I Me was like, yeah, well, you lot caused it the night before. What were we supposed to do, clear it all up? Well, you know, uh, I really uh, another... enjoyed myself moaning. Yeah, oh, good, I'm very pleased. Another final punishment <laughs> then, the final thought, because you're down on the beach there, what you should do is obviously dig some big holes, uh, bury them up to their neck and uh, watch their terror as the tide comes in. Obviously, we don't let them drown. You just put a bucket over their head and you won't see it. Um, but that would be my solution. Just bury them up there, see the terror. They won't do it again. And also, the great thing about being immersed in the sand is you can't see when they've wet themselves or pooed down their thing because it'll all be underground. And no Final rant and then I'm going, I promise. The, what, the third? This, hang on, I don't think we booked the, three this rants. Is my sec this is my second appendix to the original rant. Right, OK. They were barbecuing yeah. and they leave all the barbecue coals on the beach and then a toddler last week walked on the burnt coals and ended up in A&E all night. Good God, what was the toddler doing out there at that time? No, that wasn't at night. But the the barbecue coals keep hot until the next day. Oh, useful. You could go down there and cook something whilst you're all pent <laughs> up, couldn't you? <laughs> anyway, I will go now. Well, and, lovely to um, talk to you, uh, Bonnie. Sorry about the ranting. No, well, no, I love it. it. I love it. We love <laughs> Even it. Even if you did No, no, we love it. We love a good rant. Golly, that's what this show is all bye. about. Get it off your chest. Right, okay, bye. Take care. Bye, Bonnie. Bye. <laughs> bye. There we are. That is Bonnie having a rant. What do you think? Uh, do you think that was dreadful? I think it's awful. I mean, I do think that we that kids are a bit unruly. They think they rule the roost, but then we've given them that permission, have we not? We have allowed that situation to happen. Where are the parents? Why are the parents at work? Because parents don't do parenting anymore. Apparently, that's not for them. It's for the school. We take everything away and give it to organisations and governments. We don't take any responsibility, Not we barely take responsibility for ourselves, and we seem to take no responsibility for what our children did. And yet, years and years ago, there was that fear. If somebody said, right, I'm going to tell your father about you. Oh, oh, please, mister, don't tell my father. And then they would get a good belting with the old belt 
obviously at the back of the chair. Now, I'm not saying that punishment to children is a good thing, but somewhere, somewhere, there's got to be an answer. What do you think? 0793 4746 790 is the number. Give us a call. Uh, Lots of interesting comments there. Let's just have a little pick of the bunch before we get to our first video, ladies and gentlemen. It's a good show tonight. Do like a good rent. Do save up a rent for the Friday show. Love to have a good rent. Uh, They have to learn that actions have consequences, says Audrey Forbes. Exactly. But how? How do you do that? That's why I thought, you know, you smash up their things. They will know what it feels like. Michael White says water cannon is useless unless they are targeting a specific place. Boris wasted a ton of money. Oh, I think, though, I mean, they probably would enjoy it. That's the thing, wouldn't it? They would just laugh. And this is the problem. If you laugh at authority, the authority just disappears. So you don't want anything. I mean, rubber bullets might be a bit excessive. Uh, You wouldn't get them laughing then. Uh, Nanny state anyone afraid to upset people? I think you're right there. Uh, I Willoughby says bring back caning and smacking. Um, I think you should put the kids in the stocks. That would be good. So get them in the stocks so people can look at them. I I wouldn't want people throwing things at them. But I definitely think that they should be... If you were to parade them... If you were to parade them in the town and so they had to be there, they would make sure they're comfortable and all of that. But know that this is uh, an an embarrassing thing, that it isn't the walk of, you know, something to be in honour. But if you were able to put them in there and say, this is your idiot, this is this person damages property, this. And so that next uh, um, employers will be able to look at that and go, do we want that person working for us? Do we really want that? I mean, you've got to start it off at some point so that um, because, you know, the people say, well, they didn't think about it, did they? And, uh, you know, why should they then suffer for the rest of their life for their careers? But at some point you've got to say, well, actually, look, this is what will happen. And you make these first lot a figure of fun and all the rest of it so that the future generation know that, oh, if we do this sort of thing, we could ruin our whole career. The whole point of the O levels and the uh, whatever it was, the CSEs, the G, G, the G mails. What was it they were doing? They were doing some exam, whatever the G, G levels, O levels. I can't remember what you said now. Whatever the levels are, uh, summer set levels, whatever they were doing, the spirit levels. I, I don't know. Whatever, but what you know, the whole point of doing the examinations and getting over it and then having joy. Well, we've done. We'll celebrate, knowing that there is a limit to how far you can celebrate. Yeah, go on the lawn, have a glass of wine, you know, have a dance around, kiss your mates and what have you, but don't go and damage other people's property. It's not yours. That that needs to be just well and truly uh, brought into people. Uh, David Vad says, get out in the open. I know I I have. Uh, I don't know what that's about. Michael White says, children are told that they are little princes and princesses and then they grow up and think they're entitled. Meghan and Harry seem to come to mind on that one. Six weeks of carpet slippers, says Graham Cass. I think that would be good. Alan Sandell, my children didn't run wild and their children haven't. Yes, so where is it? Uh, Julia says, I'd better see my big brother, the slippers to his backside to know I needed to check my... Oh yes, I only need to see my big brother have a... That's right. If you see someone having a, you know, a thwack... It sort of go, oh, I don't really want that. Um, Clive says, sorry to hear the tale of woe, Bonnie. A whiff of tear gas might put the le- little devils off. Yes, the old are worse than the young, says uh, brainwashed Chris. And uh, Dean M. Cooper says, my rant today is people need to turn off their indicators if they are not turning off. I had an accident in my truck today because of this in Elm Grove in Worthing. Well, it, yes, maybe they should have uh, no radios or any other things in the cars to remind you that you've turned your indicator on because sometimes those indicators don't go off on their own accord. I mean, I've done, I've turned it and then you've been busy looking at the traffic and you realise the thing is still on. And I completely agree though, but maybe the indicator should be much louder. Maybe it should be in your ears going, kitinka, 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 meep. Meep, 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 turning left, turning left. Then maybe it would be so irritating that you'd actually remember to do it. But the trouble with driving is we're being given so many luxuries now, haven't we, that we forget we're in a box that's going at certain speeds. 
Go back to the bloke who had the original Mini, whoever it was who designed the Mini, famous guy, I can't remember his name. And I remember hearing an interview with him on BBC Radio 4 when I used to listen to the BBC before I revoked my licence and now I have nothing more to do with them because they're, they're all far too biased and uh, very woke. Uh, but when I used to listen to it, they had an interview with the guy who did the Mini and he said that when the Mini came out, we saw other vehicles having radios. We didn't put radios in. We wanted to remind people they were driving a box and going at speed, which is why it was low to the ground so you felt the travel and you had this massive great big gear stick. He said we did all of that on purpose. So there's, there might be something in that. Um, Michael White says, is it really the fault of our media who teach them to hate this country? Oh, it is really the... F yes, well, we do a lot of it. I mean, there's a lot of that. I think that is true, too. John B says, bring back the stocks and throw tomatoes at them. Um, I think definitely some sort of uh, social... You know, because teenagers particularly do not like social embarrassment. That's where you get them. That's where you hoist them. Uh, that's the Achilles heel, isn't it? If you can embarrass them in some way that makes them go crikey, I don't want to get involved in that. Even though, you know, the alcohol fueled it, the, the, the gang mo mo motality, what is the word? The gang, uh, where the gang gets, they can't help themselves. Um, stay, st Brainwash Chris says, adults make worse decisions. Uh, that may be true. I think that uh, you should say some adults make worse decisions. You can't say that all adults make worse decisions than younger kids because a five-year-old getting into a car and driving is likely to make far more worse decisions than an adult doing that. Uh, and now you may argue, well, what if the adult was drunk? And you say, well, put it th th in that case, what about if the if the uh, child was drunk? If you have equal situation so I you know I, I some adults do make worse decisions than some children but it's such a you can't just that's such a blanket statement young Chris brainwashed or not that is that is uh, still a, a bizarre statement um what else have we got uh, who's worse hun uh says Linda Kane the, the huns were pretty bad actually that's true red moon conjure says i sometimes don't switch mine off but it's usually because my music is too loud oh there you are you see um this is the thing we have so many distractions because we've made life so easy that we even forget we're driving um that said i do enjoy driving my van i know i'm a complete and utter hypocrite but we all actually, aren't we all hypocrites? We all say one thing, we do the other, but at least let's admit it and then we feel a bit better about ourselves. John B says exactly, social embarrassment is the key. Absolutely. If you can do that, I think you're on to a winner. There's got to be a way. Sensible Paul says, I don't know why people indicate to go on the roundabout, but not indicate to come off. That's very true. Um, and also a lot of people don't know how to use roundabouts and they dither and that's the thing. They forget that the people on the right have the right of way. So they've got to let them through, not try and dash out in front of them um, and, and all of that. So should rewards for info leading to the prosecution be considered? Well, I'm surprised. I'm just surprised the police didn't do more. I mean, if, the poli if there's not enough police, the best they can do is film them all. Can't they? At least then they've got it all on tape so that when they then can identify them, put them up against the beak. They should all go in front of the court, definitely, and have the, the whole of the, um, the procedure of court. Intimidation in that style early on. I think that would be good, even if nothing happens of it. So you get the old silence, silence in court. You stand here accused of vandalising Bonnie's beach hut. How do you plead? <laughs> Guilty. Guilty? You will be taken from here to a place of execution where you will be hung until you are dead. Something like that. Scare the bloody willies off them. Uh, mainly the boys, obviously, you can do that unless they're tr tr transgender fluid or whatever it is. Uh, but Jamie Boy in 1995 says, I'm a car free guy. <laughs> That's nice. Here we have a phone call. Lovely to hear a phone call. Don't forget, we have got videos we've got to play, but, you know, we're having a ball at the moment. Uh, let me put my headphones on and I can say hello to our caller. Hello, caller. Welcome to the Vogue show. Hello, Mr. Vogue. Hello. Um, Who's that? 
That's a chap from the north. Oh, is it, is it Mark Donny, you know whom? It is. Oh, Marv. Um, rather. I um, say, old chap. When one was younger and all that sort of stuff, mm. one used to get up to mischief, you know. Um, and the thing was, like, the authorities and all that are, you know, they're the, they're the bogeyman. So mm. parents, police, the system, all that, because kids grow up knowing through television, through adults, etc., that the system is corrupt. The people who run it are corrupt. Um, the whole thing is like, Set wrong. So why should we look up to these people who are screwed our country and are screwing us? So for people like me who are growing up at the time, <laughs> I'm not going to follow that. I'll do what I want. And I did. And I did get into trouble. It's true. Yes, I did get into trouble once or twice. I had to get little uh, reminders from parents and teachers and the authorities, etc. But it didn't change my mind. In fact, if anything, I knew I was getting the attention I wanted. But did you and do? Did you, were you see. were you vandalising beach huts or that the equivalent of? No, um, I think the the naughtiest thing we used to get up to was we had a form of uh, fishing. So our form of fishing was you'd have a fishing line, a reel, yeah, hmm. and on the other end was a magnet. Right. And what it was is round the corner of where we lived, there was a shop, and they used to get money back on uh, pop bottles. But when you used to put the pop bottles back in the crate, it was put the tops on, so they didn't fill up with water. Oh, right. I'm one step ahead so, of you. Very if clever. If you go fishing, <laughs> you can pick the bottle up by its top because yeah. it's you know sometimes they didn't stay on, mm. on drop, and you had to do a runner. But you could reel the things in, get a box full, take them, take them back into the shop. Get money for them. Yeah. Wait for him to shove and, it out uh, the back. And this is an ongoing circle. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 yeah. <laughs> and buy your fags. You yeah. And, and, and off you went. And you, did, and you did whatever you wanted because, and, hey, the system didn't really care. The parents or, you know, whoever was in charge had so much on their plate anyway that, um, you know, they really couldn't be asked. Or, you know, they didn't make a fuss until you actually got caught out and was like going wrong. And I think a lot of the thing is you just need to, when it got to my kids, I just made sure I knew where they were and I knew what they were up to. And, you know, sometimes, you know, they might say, oh, you know, give us you know, room to move. You know, like, you know you're, you're running our lives, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I said, yeah, there's a reason for that. Because uh, if I leave you up to your own devices, other people come up with uh, reasons for, you know, getting you into trouble because, there's, you know, you need a direction. And if there's no direction being given, then you could wander all over the place and get into trouble, like I did when I was younger. So I'm saving you that problem. And a lot of people don't do that. You know, and because there's not that there, and also parents who think, well, you know, I'll try to put um, restrictions on our kid, but, um, you know, the schools told me I can't do this. The authorities told me I can't do that. And, uh, you know, I've got washing behind the ears and all this business. I can't touch them. And they know, they know that. Do you think... Do, do, you, do you think... Here's, a, here's a, a, a an off-the-wall thing. It, when I was a kid, you know, the police... If I saw a policeman... And even now, if I see a policeman, even though I'm older than most of the policemen that I see, which does feel very weird, and I you, you used to hear that sort of thing, that policeman look very young these days, and you think, what are you talking about? Oh, but, yeah, now, yeah. but now, of course, they do. But when I was... Point. Hang on a minute. When I was younger... Um, so much younger than before. Um, I I used to think, oh my god, there's a policeman! Quick, am I walking all right? Am I have I you know have my shoelaces undone? Have I done anything? If I'm driving now, I like, oh, have I left the indicator on? Have I caused an accident? Is that you know? I'm very aware that when I see a policeman, there is something that goes up. Oh, I need to behave. Now, do you think that in the old days that um, some the system was a little bit more uh, restrictive? And there was a bit more authority and kids and, um, and, and what generally that we get a lot I of. Think that, I think that depends on where you live. Well, yeah. That, OK, that can depend on where you live. But the hardships, what I'm trying to get to is the hardships of life made people um, be more creative and inventive and work harder to overcome them. Whereas today, I feel there aren't any hardships 
um, in the same way that when people don't work hard enough to overcome, they just expect everything. And so, you know, in other words, these kids can go out with bottles of wine on the, uh, the lawns in Hove and nobody even questions that part of it, which would be a bit of an odd, you know, a few years ago going out. That's a bit, you know, that's become almost socially acceptable. And then to the point where they get drunk and start, you know, beating that, that they should have been questioned and quizzed. Like, what are you doing with wine, alcohol at your age uh, in the part in mass numbers? Mm. They just expect yeah, that we can do it, this. It's a, it's I, I a free country. I think where you're coming from, but there's another argument to this. Let's hear it. If you look, if you look at the American um, system, mm. right? in America, you can't buy or in, uh, imbibe alcohol under the age of 21. Right. So what happens is on spring break, when all these kids come out of college, they go to... Uh, you, they, Formerly would have gone down to um, the Big Easy. What's it called? Um, um, Whatever. Words, in, in the but, south. Yeah, the, wherever. They, the big Mardi Gras and yeah. all this. Right? And they would go there and they get absolutely off their rockers. Right? And what age are they? What age are we talking and, about? And, well, most of them were about 18, 19. Right, so they've not experienced but, any alcohol and they've still got three years to go before they legally yeah. can. Right. Okay. And what happens is the pressure yeah the the peer pressure to go out and yeah. get on the booze and get pissed and yeah. all that business is so much yeah oh uh, oh you're still a virgin oh you never tried this or oh, you never tried that oh you're not you've not lived you yeah but, but the thing know? is though mark with that thing, that may well what be happens is because of that social pressure yeah it, 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 I, I understand that, but the, that's you know you're saying that that's the American system, and they're 21 before they can do all yeah, these yeah. things. But so we're not in America. We're not talking about that, are we? We're, we're not in America. We're in the, in, in the UK. But right? if a 15, 16 year old who's just done their O levels or A levels or GCSEs, GCSEs, that was the what was the words I was trying to find? They just done those. They're not um, that you know they're 15, 16, aren't they? They're that sort mm. of age. They're not 18. And to me, you see the, the way it's done is wrong. So what you do is. Um, you know, you've got to make parents take more um, point in their children's lives. Mm. So what you do is, mm. right, you caution the child and you caution the parent. This is the police so doing the parent it. parent is now, has a, a police officer on their door, yeah. reads them their rights. Yeah. They say, to what's this about? We found your child imbibing alcohol under the legal age. Yes. And because you are the legal guardian, we're, we're arresting you yes. and the child. Yes, I think that that is and very good policy. Is, when it comes home, yeah, you know, when it's outside and nobody can see it, and, you know, kids yeah. are out doing whatever they do. I know in lots of homes, the parents are worse than the kids. Yeah, you know, I've never seen them. I've, I've lived on a on a on an estate where the the mother is going out at seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah, to um, uh, earn money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To, to buy the drugs. For but the rest I, of I the think day. you're right. I think the principle so, of bringing it home and to the family as it used to be. Yeah. But, so the, if but if you're I, charging. If I, was before, yeah. if I got into trouble yeah. and I were naughty and yeah. the coppers caught me, yeah. apart from giving me a, a, a clip round the ear, yeah. the worst thing, I didn't mind the clip round the ear. No. What was worrying me is if they took me home. Yeah, absolutely. Because you've got to face if your parents. If they took me home in a squad car. Yeah. Parked it outside our house. Yes, yes. Knocked on the door and asked for my father. I know I'm in through a leather in. Exactly. Literally. Yeah. Right? So, yes, I wasn't happy about you know that situation, and I don't think we should bring that back. But what it did do, it instilled fear. True. And to me, that is a level of something. It's kind of like I put in the comments earlier. A street where I was living. Yeah. 32 houses, yeah? Hmm. 17 got vandalised, yeah? The others didn't get touched. Why? Because, because the, the ones... person who owned those other houses was a local gangster known for, you know, his violent behaviour. Yeah. So they and were they policing themselves, weren't they? That if they mess with this guy, yeah. it's going to come on top. Yeah. And they're going to get a slap. 
in one way or another. Yeah, and that probably parents. still that probably still goes on. Do you think this was? Um, I, don't, I can't ask Bonnie now; she's gone. But I wonder if this vandalism was fueled by uh, the alcohol, and if it was, I would imagine it was. Yeah. Right, if it was, then maybe uh, a system like the French uh, and the sort of Mediterranean system, where uh, you have the family meals. I know people don't have family meals together. That's one thing that would have to be done. Well, where yeah, you so introduce a little bit of respect. Yeah respect for alcohol within the meal so that you know not so that you get to a point where you don't have this oh we will now over drink on this stuff and th the whole point is to get blathered yeah and the whole point was to get them to the point where it's no big deal yeah and then they're it, and then they're not, not deal, responsible okay. and they're used to it yeah. they're not going to make the, they're not going to and this is the thing when you put that 18 21 whatever limit on mm. what happens yes yeah, it, absolutely that age, they go absolutely mental. Yes, that's right, because they, they, they want to experience. I can do this le legally and you can't stop me. Exactly. And what they do, they go out and get absolutely blathered. There you go. Right, brilliant. Thank and you you, thank you for right, that, Mark. Well, leave it there because there's, there's videos to come up, isn't there? Yep, I got uh, running out of time now. To, to thank Thanks. you very much, Mark. Look after yourself. Take care, pal. Take bye -bye. care. Bye-bye. There we are, Mark Donnie McLeod, very uh, sensibly saying, and I think it's right, that if you were to have the policeman go and actually fine the parent, even though the parent may say, it was nothing to do with me, he said, well, it's your child. If he's underage, it's your child, it's your responsibility. And if we had that drummed into all parents up and down the countryside, maybe they could do something about it. But there may be an opposition to that. You might have a different opinion. Never mind. Unfortunately, we run out of time. Uh, never found out um, if uh, David from um, Waterlooville is out there, but I will try and uh, do something with this in a show coming up near you. I don't know. Does that make you look Spanish? Is that Spanish? <laughs> Not that I can do. Hola, hola. I don't know what it is. But it's good for getting the bogeys out your nose, if nothing else. I will try and make some up in a, in a Bald Explorer or something, a uh, cooking show, or even a live cooking show. But I would love to be able to thank David from Waterlooville uh, for that. I will mention it in The Naked Englishman, and I will mention it in The Bald Explorer. And the Sunday chat probably is the best place to do that, in case he hasn't seen it or in case I've uh, uh, missed it. A 1930s. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hello there. There does seem to be some riotous behaviour from some of the juveniles in Hove last night. It is a terrible situation. We go live to a man who is there. Hello. Oh, hello. I'm there live. Funny, you've got the same voice. Yes, that's right. I have the Brighton equivalent of the voice. No, the Brighton equivalent is over here, if you don't mind. Oh, uh, so sorry. Uh, now back to the studio where there's something lukewarm warming up in the oven. Um, anyway, enough of that gay bollocks. It's time to go into the uh, video suite. To calm ourselves down after all of that, we should go and have some rhubarb cakes. And there's only one man I know who knows how to grow the rhubarb. Oh, hi, the new! It's appropriate moonlit night tonight, Mrs. Wright. You're buying the rhubarb. Mm hmm. Yes, it's Sean James Cameron, and he's going to show us how to make rhubarb cakes. This bottom piece here, you just tape that off. And throw that onto the compost bin. Don't take too much off, you don't want to try and keep as much of it as possible. And then, you just cut these stalks into chunks. And the top pieces, I'm going to throw them away as well. Preheat the oven to 120 Celsius. Get your tin. And first thing is I'm going to Put some of this frizz proof paper and line it. That just helps to stop it sticking. There we go. As 
Add your butter into the bowl along with the sugar and then just cream those together. Then add the eggs and the flour and then mix together. When you get it to a creamy paste, then add one drop from the vanilla essence and then beat that in. Then into the tin, put your mixture. And if it doesn't reach into the corners, just spread it across the bottom. In the rhubarb, toss in the 25 grams of demerara sugar. And just toss it around so it comes into contact with as much as possible. The smell is that start of summer smell. It's beautiful. So now it's onto the crumble. So we add the butter and the flour and then using your fingers you just mix the two together you want to get it until it's like fine breadcrumbs so here we go now we start building so you got your cake then you put in your rhubarb don't be concerned if it if you don't cover it as if you have bits of rhubarb sticking out, that's fine, because all this will stew down. Just try and cover the bottom as much as possible. There we go. And then just add the crumble on top. And like I said, don't be worried if it doesn't cover the whole lot, because everything will work its magic in the kit in the oven. There we go, and then pop that in the oven for 25 minutes. Then bring it out of the oven and just let it cool down for a while before serving. Maybe with a bit of cream on top. Wow, that looks really tasty, doesn't it? That looks really tasty. Whoo! I hope you've made enough for me. Uh, next time you come down, Sean, bring some of that lovely rhubarb. Um, we'll shove it in the essie. That would be great. Actually, you should come down and cook something like that on the, for the essie. We'd do an essie live maybe one day. That would be great. I want to do a live sh live cooking show from here so that we, we cross down to the studio below. It's a lot of stuff to work out. Uh, probably in the autumn and, uh, you know, when the weather is not so good and we all want to eat nice warming things like that, be perfect. Thank you very much. Sean James Cameron there. Uh, don't forget, you can check him out on his channel. Just put in Sean James Cameron. I never know what channel he's running each week, but uh, it's worth having a look. Sean James Cameron, shove it in there and see what he has uh, got up, whether he's out there cooking or whether he's digging up his allotment and shoving lovely plants in. All worth having a look. Now, if you remember on Monday's show, Stephen Agger got in touch and sent a video in and he was looking at the Eddystone train and I made a crack about the lighthouse. Well, tonight he has gone to the Eddystone lighthouse and rode out there this evening, gone back in time and... Fi oh, wait a minute. Sorry, I've misread the queue there. No, it was in Corfe Castle. That's right. He's gone to look at Corfe Castle. Let's have a look at Stephen Agger's video of Corfe... Corfe... Corfe not coarse. I'm sure it's a bit coarse now. And of course, it is a castle. He says, don't worry too much about the wind or apologize for the slight wind noise. But it's lovely bit of footage down there in Dorset at Corf Castle. How rich and G vibes is out there. Just Steve Nagawa. Corf Castle.
train station is there. Got destroyed in the 1600s. Like <laughs> 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 And I just thought I shaved this fair lot. But she knew new shoe, Joe. Looks a bit overgrown, doesn't it, in Corf Castle? I thought it'd be a bit smarter. What I find a shame, thanks very much, Stephen, by the way. That's really nice to see the inside of uh, Corf Castle. How much did it cost to go in there? And what camera are you filming on? You're another one with one of these zooms that just seem to go forever. I'm looking for a zoom, and the zoom for my uh, my decent camera, I spent a lot of money, is about £900. £900! Whereas uh, I, I'm sure your camera wasn't that, that expensive, and you've got a zoom that goes forever. You must have the same camera as Bernie. Hello to the caller calling in on the Vogue show. Sean from London. Sean from London. Hello. Are you gobbling up that uh, very lovely uh, rhubarb? When did... Rhubarb crumble cake. Yeah. When did you film that? Oh, about five years ago now. Oh, but, fair enough. But I will be doing some elder, elderflower cordial and elderflower juice soon. Oh, yes. Well, we're supposed to be doing that because the lovely uh, Genevieve posted a book about how to make some of this um, elderflower stuff. And we've got to go out and start collecting some of those leaves and crack on with it. Otherwise, nobody will send us... to pick them is in the morning. Is it? In the morning? Because they have more... Because you don't add any yeast to them because it has its own. Right. And it's best to have, it's best to have it in the morning. But whatever you do, yeah. do not collect them. Put them in a plastic bag and think, I'll do it tomorrow. Right, because they go so off. You wake up and the house will smell as if 50 cats have come through and peed all over the walls. Oh, right, OK. Th th thanks for that little uh, hint. No, no, we'll have to do it there and then go out in the morning and uh, try it. No, brilliant. Well, uh, the other flowers seem late this year. They're at least two weeks late. Yes, I think everything is. The May... Um, the, the hawthorn blossom seems to be late. But mind you, we had all that rain, didn't we? And no sun for a long time. Yeah. And Julia but says the elder flowers aren't ready. Castle. You what, sorry? That castle you just showed. Yeah, Corf Castle. That would look nice if they if they rebuilt the bits that have fought, bits that have fallen down. Well, I was thinking Where that there's not much there, is there? You'd think that they could put in some wooden houses and things, a bit like um, they do at the um, Open Air Museum at Singleton. At least put in some bits to give you something to uh, hold on to, to understand what the vision is. You don't want to... Uh, I, I don't think you should add to the walls and stuff, but uh, much more interpretation. I mean, just... I mean, I think they charge you to go and walk around those ruins, but... What are they? The, I know the money goes towards making sure the ruins don't fall down, but I would. If you want to think, see, a, want to see a, a pile of bricks, I'll charge you six pounds to come to my garden. Yeah, lovely. There we are. You can just look at my no, house and I see a pile thinking, of bricks. At, at what point do you decide when we're going to in, when we're going to intervene? Well, this, obviously the castle had fall, the castle has fallen down at, at some point. Yes, because they were probably like like oh we can't get it. we've just got to let nature. Take his court. Well, it probably, I mean, it was probably during the English Civil War um, that it was with the Roundheads and the Cavalry. I mean, I can't swear to that because I don't know the history of the castle, but a lot of houses that were in some form or other, um, if they were in the hands of one of them, they would uh, wreck it so that the other lot couldn't right. have it. 
and then it would, would then it would that. fall into very artistic you know sort of you know with all the, the ivy and stuff and it would be a lovely sort of um georgian ruin on the landscape um and then of course yeah. you know slowly people started to realize actually people we can we can tag people for money to come round and look at some old ruins because if they are preserving the ruins then that's interfering and if they don't interfere, the thing will just fall down even more. Yes. Therefore, just build the thing back up again. Well, this is, I mean, I, I think one could build in, you could infill, because you can see where that connected, you could infill it with something that's yeah. not actually connected to it so that you could remove it, you're not damaging the existing walls. Um, I think but what do you do? You can't put them in, in perspex, because if you do that, then suddenly... It's not real anymore. It becomes a theme park. Yeah. I mean, it is well, a theme park when you have Castle. lots of people walking about, eating and drinking and, you know, looking at it. And as soon as you put interpretation boards and things up, it, you've changed the whole nature of it anyway. It's no longer a ruin. It's, it's suddenly, as soon as you become in t uh, pr preserving something, you've changed what it is. But, yeah. I, you, but, you know, who are you doing it for? This generation or the future generation? Or, or what? It's a, it's a well, different there's thing. a castle, um, Caffilly Castle. Mm. And as is, far that, as is that a cheese castle? They do it on the side. Oh, right, OK, thanks. But as far as I remember, they have turrets on each corner. Carrots? And one of the turrets, oh, has, turrets. Been, has been falling down, a bit like the Leaning Tower. Yeah. So they've put all this device up to stop it from falling. Right. But there was a big debate to say they they should just let the thing fall. Yeah, because otherwise, what do you do? I mean, unless you cement it up, you don't want all this stuff holding it up because then it looks stupid. Yeah, well, that's what they well that's what they've done. They've put all these um, rafters there to try and hold the wall up to stop it from falling. Yeah, but well, isn't that part of the circle of life? If if a building falls down, right, it falls down. Um, so uh, there's a few comments there about Corfe Castle. It's a national trust. Uh, members get in free, says Rachel. Um, and somebody else said yes, th um, that it's correct, that it was during the English Civil War. Um, Oliver Cromwell blew it up, says Rachel. Um, like Mark G says it was damaged in that very period. So, you know, I wasn't talking a complete load of rubbish. Um, Michael White says the English Civil War destroyed a lot of beautiful buildings, uh, buildings especially tombs in churches. Um, so, well, yeah. on that hand, then why isn't why didn't they leave half of the East End the way that it was when it was bombed as a memorial? You know, yeah. Well, this is it. Well, it's too prime. They're prime. very selective with what buildings they want to keep. Yes, but that's only a don't. recent thing. Funny enough, I've been you linked very nicely into a little piece of information I can impart live on the show today. I've been reading this book by Trevor Rowley or Rowley, The English Landscape in the 20th Century. And I've finished the last chapter today and it talks about theme park. Uh, no, it talks about uh, the monuments in Britain. And it's only really in the last 50 to 60 years that anyone really took any serious note of our old uh, buildings and stuff. And prior to that, yes, there was a few distinguished and elitist type properties that were being listed or scheduled. Um, but it's only in the last uh, 50 or 60 years, really since the end of the Second World War, 80 years then, um, that that has been that people have changed their tune because in the past they were quite happy to knock things down if they were in the way. And we were, yes, and, and even, even, well. and even then, you know, the sixties. We know what terrible things happened in the sixties, and people were quite happy to get rid of, you know, it was just sort of just not fashionable to have these old properties, and so they would shove up this new concrete which they discovered. Oh, this is marvelous concrete. Shove a bit of metal in it, and it, it sets, and it all looks as bland as anything. We'll call it brutalist, and it'll be lovely. Everybody will love it. And now, of course, less than forty, fifty years later, we're knocking that down. There's a street in South Wales where, and I don't know when compulsory purchase came in, but the council wanted to put a relief road to go up to the mountain. Yeah. And they bought all the houses um, except for this field. There was a field in the middle, and the guy didn't want to uh, sell because it had been a it had been a farm and it had been there since um, fifteen ten or something like this. Yeah. Um, and he refused to sell. So they put the road around his farm 
and the, the, the farmhouse is still there now. Good God. Um, and it goes and to show. It, well, somebody bought it in the 70s and decided to render the walls and then uh, got fined and you and had to put the house back exactly. But it'd be interesting to get somebody on the video and interview them and, and like, who... Who says in who worthy? Right, this building needs to be kept, or this that you took me to a car park. Yes. Well, is that going to be uh, a monument in sixty years? Yes, you know? yes. Well, absolutely. It's interesting you say that because you sent me an email um, a while ago saying, "Well, why don't you interview this bloke, um, Trevor Rowley?" Oh yeah. And yeah. Uh, I got in touch with the university, but it came back saying that it no longer exists. Um, not the university, but he was no longer there. Um, so I tracked him down anyway today and I emailed him and I got a very nice email back and um, it looks like I'm going to interview him um, hopefully in the middle of June. I go and see him up in Oxfordshire where he lives and talk about A, this book, B, about the terrible ravages in the last hundred years that's happened to this wonderful land and the amount of um, damage that's been done in the, in the name of progress so that we can be here doing a live digital thing using all up-to-date modern technology. Um, and 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 the real story, but also I want to talk about the uh, the dis- weird and wacky discoveries that he had when he was researching the book. So that will be coming on the board explorer soon. But we better move on, uh, Sean. No disrespect to uh, your calling in because we've only got a few minutes no, left on the show. Let's crack on. Thanking you, but thank you for that interesting Take point. Take care. Bye. Bye. There we are, Sean James Cameron there, um, who you can check out his rhubarb channel. Um, on that so thanks Stephen Agger that was uh, interesting you've got a great uh, um, load of uh, interest on that thanks for sending that in Um, so now uh, hairs hairs you don't see many of those on my head do you no of course not but I'm not talking about those I'm talking about the hairs that used to bound around we we don't see so many as we once did and I remember people like uh, W.H. Hudson and Richard Jeffries who wrote at the end of uh, the uh, 19 the 20 at the end of the 1900s um, he, he, they were writing about these wonderful animals that they used to see on a regular basis. We don't see so many of those. But Richard and Annis up there in Cumberland, they have been witnessing some of them. And they've sent in a delightful video which uh, just shows exactly what they've seen. Hairs and things.
How relaxing is that, eh? How relaxing, lovely, absolutely beautiful, and so nice to see those gambling hairs bouncing about. How wonderful it is. Thank you so much, Richard and Annis. Uh, that was lovely to see that. Beautiful, beautiful. Up there in Cumberland. I'm not quite sure where that is. I have to look up on a map. I think it's near Cumbria, isn't it? Anyway, um, lovely, lovely part of the world and lovely animals uh, gambling about, as I so rightly say. So thank you for that. Um, Ernie Samet says, I've seen a couple of hares uh, a couple of times recently, but yet to catch them on video. Amazing creatures. Saw one crossing the lane one morning and initially thought it was a large cat. Well, down there in Dorset, don't they have um, all sorts of strange animals straying around? I believe that in the beginning of uh, July, there's going to be a bald animal with a camera attached to him. Um, so watch out for that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's going to be a few passing on videos. We'll be passing them on to next uh, Friday, to the Friday show. So don't panic. We will get to see them. I don't want to rush them through, but I'll try and finish on time if we can. Um, so I will uh, pass on a couple of those. I hope you don't mind. So Bernie, if I know Bernie will be all right because he sends in plenty of videos and um, he'll probably have a, a bit of a relax then. I'm going to rush to get another video out for Friday. So I'm sure that'll be all right. Thank you so much, Bernie. And our moment of Murphy will have to be transferred. I hope that's all right um, th that you don't mind because I'd like to play out, if that's all right, with our ray of hope, our music, which will be coming up. But first... We have a quiz. Mark Burgess has sent in a quiz. Uh, this is an interesting one. I want you to have a look. Some pictures. See if you can identify um, what we have here. Hang on, I've just got to quickly find the uh, email. Uh, teasers. Teasers. He says, spotted these on my nature walk yesterday. Don't know the names. Um, one is, oh, I'm going to, yeah, it's not going to, I'm not going to tell you. He says, can anybody identify them? So we've got some flowers and trees. So we're, we'll start off with some simple stuff and then we'll get a bit more complicated. So here we go. Here's the first picture. Can you identify uh, this? Um, they look to me like Speedwell. Um, it's slightly blurred, the picture, but uh, nice and close there. So that's what the nice vivid blue, I have to say. So Bonnie should be quite good at that, I imagine. But uh, are you able to help out with this one? That would be fantastic. Uh, Rachel T.S. says, uh, Speedwell, forget-me-nots, says Jackie. Ah, maybe they're forget-me-nots, which, I, yeah, that's true. Um, I was thinking, because it's slightly blurred. They're bigger, aren't they? Forget-me-nots are bigger than uh, little blue flowers. Yeah, thanks for that. OK, let's, let's have a look at the next one then. This one should be uh, relatively easy. I know what this is. Just looking at that, we were talking about it earlier just now about collecting and Sean James Cameron said that if you leave it in the fridge overnight, it will smell something rotten. So um, that's kind of giving it away, I believe. But they are very beautiful, beautiful and delicate. Uh, Rachel T.S. says it's elder, elder flower, says Linda Kane. I'm sure everyone else is uh, well on to that. How about this? What tree? is uh, this one. I'll see if I can go a bit closer so that we can see a bit more of the leaves. Something that is in blossom there. Is it some... I mean, I'm looking at the bark because I know what cherry looks like and I'm not sure what that is. It's growing wild. Um, it may be some form of... Is it some form of cherry, is it? What, what, what other tree blossoms pink? Hawthorn. Can't be hawthorn. Pink. Do you get pink hawthorn? Maybe it is. A lot of people say, oh, red hawthorn. Not heard of red. Now I ought to know that. Red hawthorn. I didn't know that. It is hawthorn. There we are. Pink hawthorn. I didn't know that you could get red hawthorn. So I should look out for that. Maybe I've seen it but not noticed what it was. That's very nice. And uh, this one then um, is, uh, what is this? Let's see if people can uh, identify this. Um, I think that's um, looking at the leaves, I think that's blackthorn, is it? But it can't be because blackthorn is not out at the moment. Or is it hawthorn? The leaves don't look right. Some of the leaves do, but some of them, maybe it's just the way it is. Elderflowers plunged into a batter, says Mark Adventurers, and a flash fry and dust with caster sugar and cocoa powder for a nice treat. Oh, there we go. So that's, oh, Michael says plum blossom, hawthorn. I was going on hawthorn, but the, uh, the leaves don't look right for hawthorn. It looks like there's some oak leaves in there, but um, maybe you... That's why I said blackthorn, but blackthorn is, uh, is a plum blossom. There we are. Well, whatever. Um, 
not too sure. Now, what is that? That is some form of um, grass, is it? But great big leaves. It's, it's a bit like mother-in-law's tongue, but it isn't mother-in-law's tongue, is it? Uh, Wednesday's mystery, says Dave Vivand. What is that spiky grass? Uh, blackberries, says J, um, Jeff and Mandy. Uh, maybe it is blackberries. Is it? Could it be blackberries? Definitely hawthorn. That last one says the lovely... Well, I know, but the leaves, hawthorn, have very distinctive leaves. They don't have round leaves that we just saw. That's why I was um, slightly confused. We've got Isis... Uh, sorry, Iris, not Isis... Or flax, iris, Uncle Bert's winkle, says David Vad, which could be. And uh, finally, we are now we know what this one is. This is one of the willows. But which willow is it? Um, Julia and I had a look at some willow the other day. Was it pussy willow or was it... What was the other one? Um, I can't remember now. Uh, the other willow that we looked at was um, something something willow. Can't remember, but uh, I'm sure you will come up with it. Yeah, willow, wisti not wisteria. It can't be wisteria. Uh, it is a willow, isn't it? It's down there, but I bet that's by some water. Wist what else have we got there? Goats, that's right. Goat willow. There we go. Thank you. Linda Kane knows years and years of learning about these things. So there we go. That's it. Well done, everybody. Marvellous. Thank you very much. Mark Burgess, if you're out and about and you want to uh, t test the viewers, we have some uh, botanist experts here. Take some photographs and send them in to me, Richard at Vobes.com, and um, I will shove them. If it's a video, send it via WeTransfer, but if it's just pictures like that, you can send it direct to me, uh, which will be good. Um, I'm just looking to see if there was any other emails that uh, need to come in. Right, OK. So, as I say, a couple of videos we'll shunt on till Friday. Hope you don't mind about that. But it's now time for a ray of hope. Good old Raymond up there in Horsham um, has uh, put together a rather interesting melody, a very famous melody. You'll recognise it immediately. But he's uh, put it in the tempo of the Roaring Twenties. Uh, I know that you'll be fascinated by this, so we will nip into the video box. Take it away, Ray. Well, Mr. Vogues wanted to try or challenge me to try and play a well-known song to the wrong rhythm. So I'm going to take Yesterday, which is obviously the most well-known ballad song probably in history, but certainly in the last half of the 20th century from the... Lennon McCartney. I'm going to try and play that to a Charleston 1920 or Roaring Twenties rhythm. Let me know what you think. Here we go. Isn't that amazing? Thank you so much, Ray. That was absolutely brilliant. Uh, one tune to the uh, the theme of another, a bit like the old radio series, Sorry I Haven't a Clue. Uh, but there you go. That's it for tonight. Thank you so much. If you want to challenge Ray, I was thinking what we should do is at the end of the year, Ray, you should uh, release um, a few of these uh, and we should put them onto a, a special podcast download that we can have a party to your music. It would be fantastic. Wouldn't that be amazing? I think that would be fantastic. Anyway, uh, that's it for today. Thank you for joining 
joining me on a Wednesday midweek. Here we are at 9.30 exactly. That's the way we like to run it up on the 2nd of June 2021. My thanks go to all of you lovely people typing away out there, to the lovely Julia and Judith for moderating and making sure that everyone's behaving themselves, to Sean James Cameron for calling in and uh, giving us the interest recipe for rhubarb cakes, to Stephen Agger for Corfe Castle, to Richard and Annis for the hairs herring around, and of course to Ray for that wonderful piece of music yesterday by the Beatles in Roaring Twenties mode, to Mark Burgess for our wonderful quiz, to Bonnie, of course, to set us off with the rant of the evening. How brilliant was that that was fantastic if you would like to have a rant get it off your chest and i'm not talking about bras um, then do send your rant or ring in on the friday show or any show we'd love to hear from you don't forget you can help and support this show if you've enjoyed it a few pennies are way go to baldexplorer.com and uh, use the donate buttons always very useful um, in the meantime i hope to be out and about in the weather And I'll be back here live for a Friday show with Julia remotely, hopefully, fingers crossed, and uh, some of your videos and maybe some more rants and bits and bobs. But that's it for today. Take care, one and all. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, I will see you on Friday. Take care. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.